Welcome everyone. This is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about our tune-up series, part 51, the multitude of mindsets. Now, if you can recall the episode when I talked about comprehension and communication, that episode is going to be reminiscent of what we're going to be talking about today. We're not going to be talking about communication and comprehension. That one was talking more of a bigger picture that it needed its own episode for. But I do want you to understand that there is going to be a concept where we can put communication and we can pit it against comprehension. Which path do we take? Sometimes you might think, well, I just want to comprehend everything but not be able to communicate and vice versa. But at the end of it, will you be where you want to be? Today, we're going to be talking about a tune-up series that's going to be helping us understand on the different paths that we can be taking. It's going to be an either or method. You can do it at home. You can do it in your mind. But I recommend getting a piece of paper and jotting it all down. But let's first take a look at the most recent blog so we can begin our conversation. All right, everyone, if you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and to share the video and our audio to help build a community of like-minded individuals who want to see the world do better, be better, and grow in the sense that every single day is a new opportunity rather than another day of struggle and grief. Today, we're going to be talking about a tune-up series. Tune-up series are going to be for people who have strong mindsets, who are able to understand these concepts. And even if you have been listening to the podcast, it's similar to having a coaching session with me. The only thing is, I just can't ask specific questions about your life and then give you a good path that you can be taking because everyone's going to have a unique way to do things. They might have a different outcome. They might have a different goal. And what works for one person might not work for the next person. For example, fitness and certain diets and things like that. Everybody has an intolerance to some type of food in their life. It could be weed, it could be dairy, it could be nuts, whatever. You can have an intolerance to something, and if you are taking it, you can become inflamed, and it can cause your body to have to work over, exert more energy, so you have less energy to do the things that you're supposed to be doing. Being successful, for example. We talked about it. So when we get into TUS Part 51, the multitude of distinctions, we do have to understand that, well, what is the multitude of distinction? I give a couple of examples here. I'm not going to necessarily go down the whole list. I just want you to understand the concept behind what I'm trying to say because this can be in any aspect of your life. For example, a distinction could be kind versus rude. You can be a kind person or you can be a rude person. If you are a kind person, what can that bring? Typically, it's going to bring more opportunities, but then it can also give the chance for someone to take advantage of you. Then we get into being rude. If you're rude, people are not going to like you. But maybe if you're rude, you can be more assertive and get some certain, you know, goals and businesses and stuff like that. Now, I'm sure both have pros and cons. We have been taught to be kind that rude is not going to get us the things that we want. And negativity actually is not going to retain people long term. However, if we know anything about the mind, the mind is three times more negative than positive. So it's going to be more familiar to be rude than it is going to be kind, all right? So if you're kind to someone, people are going to look at, well, what's the ulterior motive rather than if you're just rude, they're just going to say you're a jerk. So our mind thinks in a different way. Nothing wrong with it. It's just how we are, right? And depending on your culture, your community, where you grow up in, your upbringing. So if you grew up in a lower income household where you struggle to pay the bills, food, etc., you're going to have a different view on kindness and being rude than if you were grew up in a sense of privilege and entitlement. All different, not wrong. Another example is weak versus strong. I talk about this concept quite often here on the podcast. I also talk about it in Mindset OD. Do you have a weak mindset or a strong mindset? Can you be a weak individual or a strong individual? What does that mean, right? If you're weak, for example, maybe you allow people to walk all over you. However, you can also be weak in the sense of you don't want to show up to the person that you can become. There's a different sense. There's a different path, right? Strong, for example, 
You could be a boss babe. You could be a go-getter. You can be that assertive person in your life. But if you're masculine, you're toxic, right? So there's different paths, different levels to what we can have here, the different levels of distinctions. And communication and comprehension can be one of them, but it is a little bit different because we get to choose, well, what flavor do we want? Think about going to the ice cream shop or store, whatever. You can say, well, I want a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of strawberry, and you put all that together and you get your flavor of ice cream that you're looking for. Whatever flavor you want to call it, I call it a mess, but that right there is going to be what you are going for. You might say that you want to be rude, weak, able, forceful, a follower, energized, sad, caring, all of those things, right? You might say that is the path that you want to take. That actually is going to create the personality, is going to create the mindset that you're living in. So you have to ask yourself, what path are you going to be taking today? So we're going to be getting into that conversation right now. So when we begin to look at the multitude of distinctions when it comes to the traits that we can have in our life, just as I explained earlier, if you're a video watcher, you saw them on screen. We have to begin to be deliberate in how we choose those, right? Do we want to be a kind person? Do we want to be a strong person? Do we want to be a weak person, a nurturing person? Who do you want to be? And let's say you can only have 10, 10 traits that are going to be your ride or die traits that are going to help you become the person that you're supposed to become. What are those traits for you? Now, I give a list of, I think about 10. And you can use that list or you can create your own and you can start to figure out, well, this is the path that I would like to take. This is like an either either type of situation, right? You can be this person or this person. You might find that this person is going to help you get to where you want to be more effectively. For example, if you want to be a CEO of a company, it will help to be more confident, more assertive, maybe a little bit more forceful. but then also caring, right? Because you want to care about your workers. You want to care about your clients, things along those lines. So you have to find the right mix. Now, for example, you can also be a salesperson that doesn't care about your clients. You want the commission. You want fast money. You don't care how you get it. You might have to sacrifice some people along the way. So you might be rude. You might be like deliberate, forceful, and you might not be caring. Okay, so you might be a little bit more unkind. Nothing wrong with that. It's just how you choose to live your life. It's a choice that you get to choose. There is no right or wrong. I always say be more positive because that's going to lead to more abundance in the future. But if you are a person that's just stuck on immediate gratification, you can choose the negative. What I will tell you is that this list will evolve over time because you're going to just grow as a person and some of the negative traits will naturally go positive. That is why I am not adamant about if you choose a negative today, okay? So if you have a paper or if you have your phone, go into the notes section and I want you to write down 10 different types of traits that you would like to have into your life. The multitude of distinctions are going to be dependent on those 10 traits you give yourself. Now, we don't want to give ourselves too many. I understand you can have 100. But let's focus on 10. And then when you get those 10, I want you to find three categories that everything could fit under. Personal life, career, and then family life. Now, there is a difference between personal life and family life. Personal is going to be what is you? How do you feel? Okay? Your family life is going to be almost like relationships. Okay? You're spouse, your kids, your parents, your siblings, whatever, right? All of that is going to go under that umbrella, okay? So whether you put everything under personal life, okay. If you put everything under career, okay. Same thing is, you know, in family relationships, okay. There does have to be a reason why you do the things you do. Now, you might find that you are career heavy. Nothing wrong with that, especially if you are younger, right? You want to build yourself up is the lie that you have been told, right? You need to build yourself up before you can go live life and be happy. You can build yourself up 
any single day of the year. Most people are not going to build themselves up even though they give themselves a mindset and aspiration to build themselves up. So we give ourselves a idea to build ourselves up. We give ourselves a notion to build ourselves up. Yet we're not doing the things that help build us up. But if we can become deliberate when we choose these three different areas and we put our 10 traits in these three different areas, you're going to find that you are going to be more successful in what you do. Because you have to now start to look at this. If I want to be successful in my career, I need to make sure I'm kind, caring, whatever your traits are, right? You go down that list. The same thing with family and the same thing in personal life, right? Caring, for example, in in your family life, right? Because maybe you say, you know what? Caring has to be in two places. It's possible the 10 traits can be cohabitated in different areas. You might find that those 10 traits just fit perfectly in all those areas. Now, being forceful in your family, I don't know if that's necessarily going to work well. You know, being powerful in your family, I understand there's going to be gender roles where maybe the man is going to be leading, maybe the breadwinner. That could be an aspect too. But again, depending on your situation, you're going to have a different outcome. And I stress that because when I do these, you know, walkthroughs to help people through these mindset processes and shifts and, you know, coaching, it's important that you understand that there's a multitude of different options and and outcomes. When I work with my clients, I can tell them, I can see what they're, you know, going through. I can hear what they're thinking, right? Because now they're thinking, they're talking to me and I can start to get a good perspective on where a trait should go and then some obstacles that might come because of what they chose. So I can see that with my clients. However, if we're not working together and you're doing this exercise by yourself, you have to understand that there's going to be maybe a couple blind spots that you're going to learn the hard way. There's nothing wrong with learning life, going through life. If you want to be effective and you want to get there as quick as possible, get yourself a coach, reverendconcepts.com, get yourself a free consultation. We can go through these 10 traits. We can go through these three categories and make sure that you understand them and that you are in the best place possible. What we want to do and what we want to accomplish with the multiple of distinctions, essentially, is understanding that there is going to be a choice we have to make. Now, that choice can stem from our behavior, our emotions, and maybe our actions, all right? Our thoughts, feelings, and our actions are something we control. We should not relinquish those to anybody. However, oftentimes, we relinquish those to people. People tell us how to think, people tell us how to act, and people tell us how to feel. If you want to be controlled and being controlled is easy, it's the easy road, right? You're just a cog in the wheel. Nothing wrong with it. It's a way to live life. Everyone gets to live life the way they want to live. Some people, they want to live in abundance. They want to do all of these great things and they don't want to be just another statistic. However, some people are just so fixed minded that they can't see the bigger picture. But if you have been listening to coaching session for, it doesn't even matter how many episodes, probably around three episodes, you probably are already in the mindset of shifting. Okay, well, let me start to think in a more positive manner. How can I start to change the outcome of my life and make things the way it's supposed to become? Because if you think for a moment that life is going to be handed to you, think again. Life is not handed to you. People are going to see what you have, and if you're doing better than them, they're going to say you're going the wrong way. They're not going to say you're doing the right things. They're going to use the other side of your traits. This is why we wrote them down. This is why we are clear and defined in what we do. Because when you are in your career, when you're in your family, or you're in your personal life, people are going to say you're selfish instead of being kind. People are going to say that you are being self-centered instead of being community-based. People are going to say that you are being angry when you're supposed to be kind, okay? Or when you really are kind, right? Because people are going to perceive the negativity of them not getting what they want or being able to control your thoughts, feelings, and actions. And they're going to say, oh, it's the opposite. And that is the quickest way for people to conform. 
It happens a lot with peers. It happens quite often in schools, in a school setting, and it can happen in a workplace setting to career setting. It can happen with family too, I guess, too. But family sometimes can be like, I don't care what you say, what you think, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Whatever you choose, understand that you have an obligation to yourself to follow through with the traits that you picked for yourself today. If you haven't picked them yet, I encourage you still to pick them, pick about 10. Just, you know, choose either or write a list of kind, angry, whatever. I have the list on the website. Go to reverendconcepts.com backslash blog. You will be able to see this blog also in the description box below. There is a link directly to this blog that you can get here and you can easily see what's going on. I will say that it is going to be difficult because you're going to do a little bit of trial and error. You're going to say, I'm going to try this. I'm going to start with this way. When you do it that way, you're going to find that, oh, you know, maybe I need to change this up. Maybe I need to adjust this. And there is nothing wrong with changing it. There is nothing wrong with having some alternatives. Think of it as a basketball team, right? You have five people on the court and then you have other people who are on the bench. You swap out people at prime times in the game. So switch up defenses, offenses, right? It's almost like a dance. And our traits are similar to a dance. Sometimes we're going to have to be more assertive and sometimes we might have to be a bit more of a follower. There is no right or wrong way to reach success. There is no right or wrong way to live life. There is only the way that you wish to live life. Now, you might find that you are more successful if you are a certain type of personality, a certain type of trait. There is nothing wrong with continuing with that long term. For people who do not pivot when they're hitting a wall, when they're going through a hard moment in their life, those people are going to find that these traits are not effective for them. So those people are going to naturally turn negative. Just as I said, you can be negative and you could still be successful. But if you are just trying to be successful and you're just negative, 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 and your traits are negative and they're turning negative and you're having negative results, you're going to find that your traits are negative. You don't have the results that you want. And then you're wondering why these, you know, these traits are not working for you. Is because you have not found the right mix. That right mix, as I said early on, is going to be different for everybody. So it's important that you find the right mix for you. When you start to look at this blog, Tune Up Series Part 51, The Multitude of Distinctions, you're going to find that there's just so much more that you can start to implement by understanding these distinctions. Because when you're trying to figure out what is going on in your mind, It might be a pattern that you're not familiar with because you might be thinking in a positive way. You might be thinking in a negative way. We call that pessimism and optimism. So you can be an optimistic type of person. You want everything good to happen. Things are going to happen, right? You're visualizing things are going good, but you're not getting the results. The same thing is true with your pessimistic, right? You just like, you just don't see the good in the world and nothing as good is happening. And you're trying to figure out, well, why me? This is so bad. Why even try, right? Well, our dreams can be accomplished. And in this blog, we talk about how to get over your limiting beliefs, how to start to step into your true power and become the person that you're supposed to be today. In closing, this is a quick one, right? Because what the multitude of distinctions is, is a way for you to understand that you get to make a choice. You get to make a choice to make some changes. You get to make a choice to not make some changes, right? But directive, direction is so important when it comes to success, is so important when it comes to us being the people that we're supposed to be. I understand sometimes people think, oh, you know, I'm just going to be this type of person because this is what I was taught and this is what seems so familiar. And the second most dangerous phrase that someone can possibly say is, oh, I've always been this type of person, or oh, I've always done it that way. Well, if you keep thinking that way, you will always have the same results. You have to find the right mix, the mixture that's going to make you the person that you would like to be. I find when you get a coach, when you get a mentor, when you get a guide, it's just so much easier to find these traits because you can find out like, oh, wait, that's the type of person I'm supposed to be? Because sometimes we lie to ourselves 
And it's because we are told, well, you know, men don't cry. Men have to be tough. Men can't use their emotions, things like that. You know, women have to stay in the kitchen and they can't be, you know, career orientated because then they're going to be feminists. And I mean, we can go down the list of problems that come from our actions. But what I want you to take away from this is you get to live your life any way you want, but you do need to have a clear definition of what you're going for. You need to understand that what you're going for has an outcome. So for example, if you eat 50 cheeseburgers a day, I don't know how you do it, but if you did it, you're going to gain some weight, extra weight that you don't need. And you're going to probably become obese at one point in time, just from eating those cheeseburgers every single day. Now you might say, well, I don't want to be obese, but you're not doing the right things to not be obese. So the same thing is true in the multitude of distinctions. So if you're not being kind and caring every single day, it's not so much of being kind and caring to your boss and your coworkers and your family. Are you being kind and caring to yourself? Are you doing the things that you're supposed to be doing? Are you enriching your life with personal development material? Are you going to the gym, getting more energy, finding ways to get more energy? Are you being deliberate in your mental care and your mindfulness? I don't know. but. Every aspect to the three areas, to the traits that I want you to pick and to choose for yourself, you're going to find that there is a path for you to take. Now, that's only a small piece of the puzzle, right? TUS Part 51 is a small piece of the bigger picture when it comes to mindset, but it is going to be a great start for many people when they have something and they can become a bit more defined. For example, you are doing something you love. You might not be seeing the success quite yet. You might have some hardships and some moments where you are second guessing yourself. This right here is going to be your clear defining moment. You're going to see if you can be the either or, then you have to ask yourself, do you want to be this person long term? What does this person bring about later in the future? Because you might say, okay, well, this person is kind, caring, or you might say this person is rude and obnoxious and angry or whatever. And you might have an example of a person in your life. Ask yourself, do you want to be this person in 50 years or 25 years or whatever, right? We can use people's lives to our benefit. Someone who has already walked the path, who has lived it, for example, a teacher. I love teaching. I love teachers. Teachers do a great job. But when I was a young teacher and I was in school and I'm like still in my 20s, I would see teachers retire. I would see what they have accomplished. And no doubt, no doubt, they have done something amazing in their life. Simply, I just wanted more. So I asked myself, do I want what they have or do I want something different? And I wanted something different. There was nothing wrong with me wanting something different. There's nothing wrong with you wanting something different. But you do need to understand what type of traits you need to have, develop, and then to attain or cultivate so you can nurture the results that you're looking for. Again, everyone's destination can be different. You might have the same type of traits as the person next to you that wrote them down to, and you're going to find that your end goal can be different than their end goal. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because just like the notion of chefs in the kitchen, think of like Chopped, one of those shows where chefs are given three ingredients that they have to incorporate in the meal, you can get something so different. And in life, the same thing can happen. You can get the same traits, you can get the same mindsets, you can even get similar people, but you're going to get a different outcome most of the time. So ensure that outcome is going to be something that you want in your life. Check out this blog. Reach out to us here at Reverend Concepts if you need some help. We are here to make sure that you can prosper, that you can grow, and that you can be the best version of yourself today. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me coachingaccession at gmail.com, and I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching in Session. Until then, everyone take care.